What is up, YouTube? That's here, bringing you guys another episode of In a Twinge. We have a brand new team that I just made. Uh, it's based off an acronym that uh, I'm going to be explaining in just a minute, but uh, uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I've seen a lot of people on Twitter use uh, the first letter of each Pokemon's name in an acronym. You know, popular ones from the season would be like the AFK team, which is Arcanine, Fini Cartana, or Chalk from 2016, which was like Cresselia, Heatran, Amoongus, Landorus, Kangaskhan. You use the first letter in... Uh, uh, you know, each of your Pokemon's name and spell out a word or phrase, and that is pretty much the uh, the idea behind this uh, little gimmick that people are going with. So my team is going to be the Gact Core with a uh, Drift Bloom at the end, so it's Gact D, and uh, Gact is a Japanese, uh, you know. Japanese rock artist, some of you guys might know him. Uh, he's one of my favorite artists. I really like Gact, and I actually think this team is pretty cool. There's a ton of common weaknesses, obviously. There's like a Celesteel and a Carton in the same team. That's a huge weakness to fire, and like anything that would, like a Thunderbolt would be good against Celesteel, but a Thunderbolt's also good against Cartana. So this is not the best team, but this is my play at this whole like acronym thing that people are going with. Uh, a couple of things about this team you see, I'm running an Assault Vest Bulky Garchomp. I think you guys have probably seen it before. I don't really know if I've shown it in any videos yet. I'm running a tract on my choice scarf Arcanine. That's going to be pretty juicy. We're running a leftovers wide guard Steela, Focus Sash, standard Cartana. We're running an Electricum Z Lele with Thunder, and we're running my standard Drip Bloom. You guys have seen me use a million times before. So hopefully we can win some games. I think this team is pretty fun to use. We're in the 1700s, and we're going to try and shoot a little bit higher. Let's get into some games. All right, going up in our first game, we see Hariyama, Gengar, Bulu, Coco, Arcanine, and Cartana. So the first thing you want to look at when playing this team is how many of your opponent's Pokemon can you use a tract on? It looks like the only thing we can technically use a tract on is the Gengar, but that does not mean that Arcanine is not an amazing Pokemon in this game. Arcanine has one shot potential on almost all of those Pokemon. I say at least three or four of them Arcanine has one shot potential on. So we are going to be leading with Arcanine because Arcanine is amazing, I think. It's either we go Arcanine or we go Wayway Blim. And I, I really want to say I get I get a scarf vibe from that Gengar, but I don't really know if that's like a problem. Maybe I could go Bulu Lele. Or sorry, not Bulu. Sorry, I saw the Bulu. Maybe I could go Lele Blim. Let's go Lele Blim. Let's try Lele Blim here. Um, so we got the Lele Blim. I will be bringing the Arcanine. The, and the main reason why we're not leading with Arcanine is because I don't want it to get intimidated by the opposing Arcanine. And looking at the last slot, uh, I think I am going to bring Garchomp. I do not think Garchomp is great here. I think I could probably get away with Cartana, and Cartana might be a little bit better. But we're going to bring Garchomp. Bested Garchomp is actually a really, really solid Pokemon. It has super effective moves against every single one of these Pokemon except Hariyama, who just takes big damage from moves like Dragon Tail. So uh, we're just going to come in with Garchomp, and we should be fine. So we're hopping into the first game. I think this guy was from France. I don't know if that has anything to do with how he pronounces his name. But uh, there you go. It'll probably show it in the little title cards throughout the game. But hopefully I can uh, play some pretty cool stuff. I, if he leads Gengar, I'm really skept skeptical. I'm, I'm totally pronouncing that word. But uh, Gengar, I'm really getting the vibe of a Scarf Gengar. And I do not want to see Scarf Gengar because that would be just so annoying. Because another reason why I wanted to lead with a... Uh, not lead, but another reason why I wanted to bring Cartana is I could like switch in Cartana on my Lele slot to block a Sludge Bomb and set up a Tailwind for free. It'd be really, really good. But it looks like uh, everything's happening correctly. Looks like my Lele is actually faster than the Arcanine. So uh, that that kind of matters. Like, let's say that Gengar... Uh, if, I, if I was a standard Drift Blim, I could just Shadow Ball the Gengar and Psychic the Arcanine, and I'd be good. But you know what we're actually going to do? We're just going to... We're going to play it safe. We're going to protect with our Lele. We're just going to play the standard play. And we're actually going to Tailwind. And if he wants to go for the nuke on my Drift Blim... Uh, you know, so be it. So he is. He is. And I'm totally getting the vibe of that Scarf Gengar. Let's see it. Let's see it, Scarf. Because, like, why would you helping hand a Gengar in this scenario? Tell me why. There's the Scarf Gengar. I knew it. I saw it a mile away. I still think I can live, though. I still think I live. Yeah. Like, my Drift Bloom is almost full special D. It's made to live these on purpose. So, yeah. Scarf... Scarf nothing, that's what it is. So uh, now what we're actually going to do, we're going to take a little bit of a read. Actually, there, there's two ways I do this, right? I can either protect with my Drift Blim. Actually, we're going to do this. We're going to switch in Garchomp and protect with Drift Blim. I want to see what he goes for. I want to see if he goes for a Sludge Bomb or another Shadow Ball. And this kind of has all my bases covered. And then next turn, I have like a huge power play. And I don't really need the Lele on the board right now. Like, there's no reason for me to attack with both Lele and Drift Blim. 
uh, you know, because that's risking losing one of them. Yeah, he's withdrawing. He's like, I don't want to deal with this. And he's going to come in with a Coco. Look, this is still super good for me. I have this juicy Garchomp on the board against this board. Like, oh my gosh, it's so good. So, uh, anyways, Driftblum's going to be protecting. I'm assuming he's, like, flamethrowing that Driftblum slot. To try and finish it off, uh, there's the Flare Blitz onto... Wow, he actually hit the Lele slot. Wow. Wow, he was just ignoring my Driftblum. Don't burn me. Don't burn me. Don't burn me. All right, cool. He didn't burn me. I was going to be like, man, that burn would have really sucked, but uh, it's all right. So he's damaged by recoil and uh, all the other stuff, rough skin. So we're going to go EQ, and we're going to go Shadow Ball into that Coco. And I just want to get the Coco off the board. I think it's kind of important. And remember, he also switched out the Gengar because he wanted to reset the... Uh, the terrains and take away the power of my psychic train from Lele. Yeah, that's completely fine. We're gonna be sending Lele out later. It kind of just sucks that we're gonna have to use Lele without a uh, without a Tailwind because we're probably gonna lose Driftblim this turn. What I assume is gonna happen is Driftblim's gonna hit Coco, Coco's gonna hit Driftblim, Garchomp's gonna Earthquake, Coco's gonna go down, and then that's that's pretty much it. Oh, he's withdrawing. Is he coming back in with the Gengar? Please come back in with Gengar. Oh, it's Cartana. I mean, that's fine with me too. Now we've seen all four of his Pokemon. Arcanine's protecting? That's that's also fine. So you mean I get to save my Drift Blim? Like, these are things that I take here. So Shadow Ball's gonna come in on the Kartana. We should be able to pick up a KO, unless it's some weird Kartana set. Like, EQ should be enough to take it out. And I think I have one more turn of Tailwind, which means I'm most likely just gonna protect next turn and go for the EQ, even against any of his Pokemon, really. So we should be fine. Remember, he does not know that we're, like, the bulky Garchomp from Hell, so... He just has to assume that we're full attack Garchomp, when in reality, we're full HP Special D. I guess we're Adam in nature. That was a that was a mistake I made when I made this Garchomp, but it is what it is. So I just want to check the Tailwind counters. Uh, if this is the last turn of Tailwind, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. This is the last turn. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attack. Who is the priority target, though? That Arcanine's slower than my Lele, which means uh, Coco is the priority target. Yeah, so we're going to Shadow Ball and Earthquake. We already know that the Arcanine has Protect. I guess I could be attacking the Arcanine because its Protect on, is on cooldown. And that's a little bit of a... I don't know if this is a misplay. I really don't know. We're going to see. I'm Shadow Balling and I'm Earthquaking. And the reason why I'm doing that is because uh, I think that... Okay, Coco Protects. Wow, I suck. I suck. I'm going to lose my Drip Bump for free. That's very annoying. Oh, he goes for E-Speed. Okay. Good Good job. I guess he's gonna let me set up my. He's gonna let me set up a second tailwind. That's that's an auto game loss right there. Why are you protecting with Coco then? You gotta try to attack if you're just gonna go for a a play like that. It lets me get up a second tailwind. And I, I don't even think I'm gonna KO this Arcanine. He's probably assuming I KO it. Oh, I do KO it. Oh, that kind of sucks then. All right. Let's see. I don't want to deal with this then. Hmm. Yeah, the correct play here is to uh, just go for the Earthquake and Shadow Ball into the Gengar. I'll get something out of it, you know? I will get one thing. One thing will go my way. Hopefully. Hopefully something will go my way. Yeah, so we're Shadow Ball in the Gengar and Earthquake. My Tailwind expired, but I still think I'm going to be able to win the game. Gengar's going to go for Shadow Ball. Uh, I think my Garchomp lives... Maybe I should have protected with Drift Bloom. Like, I knew he was Shadow Balling, but this would make it so my Garchomp would take not single target damage from Dazzling Gleam. Because I think single target damage from the Dazzling Gleam is going to be enough. Oh my gosh! Look how bulky I am! Look at, look at the bulk! I'm at three! He was even orbed! I bet he cannot believe his life right now. Oh my goodness. Garchomp, the MVP. Assault Vest Garchomp. Just doing way too much work this game. Way too much work. I mean, that, that's kind of what he gets for bringing Gengar, Coco, Aang, and Arcanine to fight me. So, did he just like DC? <laughs> Yo, flex on him. There we go. Well, we take those. Pretty good. Pretty good. Not gonna lie, that was amazing. Alright, so we're going into game two. We see Muck, Metagross, Arcanine, Garchomp, Coco, and Gyarados. So, pretty cool team here. I saw the Metagross and the Gyarados, a core that I really like a lot. He has double Intimidators, which means it's gonna be really hard for us to get in with all the things we need to get in with. Uh, looking at this team, also, there's only one female in his Garchomp, so Arcanine's still really good, but I don't really know if Attract is gonna be that useful. I think I will be leading with the Arcanine, though. I mean, it's just a good Pokemon. No, actually, I think we have to Lele Blim. I don't really want to, though. 
No, yeah, we have to Lele Bloom, because, like, Will-O-Wisp is just, like, the bee's knees in this matchup. There's four priority burn targets over there, and I want to burn all of them. And so we're going to Lele Bloom. I think Arcanine's good. And it's either Kartana or Garchomp. I don't think I'm going to bring my Garchomp, though. I know there are three, four juicy to Oh, I have to bring the Garchomp. I gotta do it, right? But this all physical attackers, it's, like, wasting my... It's wasting my investment in Special B, because he has, like, all physical attackers. Maybe, hmm, maybe Cartana's better? I don't know. Cartana could be better. We still have 14 seconds. I think I will bring the Garchomp, though. It's too juicy not to bring it. Alright. And we really only need Garchomp to work once against that Coco to make it really worth it. If the Coco goes to, like, an HP Ice and it does, like, 60% and then he dies, well, then that's, that's totally worth it. So let's see what the guy leads with. I think we're going to be okay. I don't think we're going to get to use Attract this game. Like, if I get pinned and I have to Attract the Garchomp to stop it from tearing everyone up, I will. But we see Coco Arcanine as the lead here versus Layla Wimp. So he's already wasted one of his Intimidates. And we're going to see when the Arcanine Intimidates. So we're seeing Electric Surge happening as according to plan. Let's see... Intimidate. So that is a full speed Arcanine, and a, he may be just full speed Adamant, or he may be full speed Jolly. So, I will see. We will see. Hmm. I want a Tailwind, but like I don't think. You know what I think we're gonna do? I think I'm just gonna Psychic the Coco and protect with my Drift Bloom. I think it's now to, it's time to bust out the. Uh, Protect Drift Bloom that I haven't really used in a little while. Because it looks like what he's probably... What I would do if I were him, I would probably Volt Switch into my Drift Bloom. And then Flare Blitz into the Drift Bloom. KO the Drift Bloom, let him get the Tailwind up. But then take like a significant Pokemon advantage. So we're going to try that. And then once the Coco's gone, you know, this game's going to be a little bit easier. That's my plan. If he's Volt Switching on my Lele, he's, he's weird. Because Lele should just be Protecting. There we go. Volt Switch gets blocked by Protect. He goes for a Snarl, which is, you know... Another really good uh, play. It lets him keep his uh, Coco alive. Like, Coco just eats the Psychic now. Like, no problem, probably. But remember, Coco will get hit by the, the Shadow Ball next turn. Alright, so how do I want to deal with this? I think I'm just going to switch Lele out, then. I think I'm just going to switch out Lele for Garchomp. Actually, I'm going to switch out Lele for Arcanine. Just in case he actually wants to go for an attack, uh, I'd be intimidating it, and uh, you know, I'd keep everything that I want to keep. And then we're just going to Shadow Ball the Coco. Coco can protect, but remember, we're intimidating his Garchomp. Sorry, we're intimidating his Arcanine by switching in our Arcanine. So even if we went for like a Flare Blitz on my Drifleman and a Protect with his Coco, it wouldn't really work. And I really do think that is a Specs Coco, which is why I did the play that I did. So yeah, Shadow Ball just comes in on Coco. We take out the Coco, we're up a Pokemon. And uh, yeah, we don't really have to Tailwind anytime soon. We have a Scarfmon and a Drifleman with a... Uh... Ooh, he misses on Arcanine. That's pretty good. It doesn't really... It, if Like, it would have showed how... Uh, invested in offensive stats we were if we took that shot that that snarl so I'm really glad that he missed there I kind of wish that he hit my Arcanine and missed the Drift Bloom because Drift Bloom uses Shadow Ball but remember all of his other Pokemon every single one of them are physical attackers so like I could burn all of them I could I could literally just burn all of them into the ground so what we're gonna do here I think my, my Arcanine is intimidated but I am just gonna wild charge that Gyarados and then I'm just gonna Tailwind now I don't really have to Tailwind right now, but I, I am going to Tailwind, just because I want to, I want everything to work according to plan, I don't want to get, I don't want something weird to happen, and like, him get a Dragon Dance off, I don't want any of that stuff, I wonder if that's maybe a Scarf Gyarados, because like, why would he not protect? Because he would think that he's safe, he could go for like, a Scarf Waterfall on my Arcanine, and be pretty good, but the Wild Charge comes in, I'm going to take a huge amount of recoil, but, like, those are things that I take, so we already have a... Two Pokemon to four lead, and let's see what his last Mon is. His Arcanine is just stuck snarling. He misses on my Arcanine again, and uh, my Drift Blim is not in a good spot here. It's so weak. I mean, I'm just going to will wisp whatever he sends out, so. I hope it's not the... Did he have Garchomp? I think he had it, but it's Muck. All right, I'll burn that thing. Muck can get burned. He's probably going to be knockoffing my Drift Blim. I have Garchomp and Lele, so I think I'm just going to switch in the uh, Garchomp. And, uh, just gonna wool with the muck. Nothing else to really do. I think we got this one. He's probably gonna be running soon, I think. Just cause I have such a lead. And look at this Garchomp. This Garchomp is just exerting an extreme amount of dominance. We hit a Wolowisp, and I really doubt that Muck has a Lumberry. 
or what is the berry that cures burn? Is it like a rawest berry or something? He goes for a flamethrower with his Arcanine. It looks like it's a bit of a special Arcanine. The Drift Bomb is much too bulky. He goes for a curse with his muck, which is a good shot, but in reality, like, what is he really going to do against this type of board? Like, he could curse all day till the cows come home. I still got a Lele in the back. I still got my Arcanine in the back. And I think I should be in a pretty good spot. So yeah, we're just going to go for an Earthquake here. And a Shadow Ball up into this Arcanine because there's not... I'm not going to be Shadow Balling a Muck. That's like a waste of my time. Minus two Drift Flim Shadow Balling a Muck is not the play. I think he takes more damage from Burn. So yeah, we're just going to Shadow Ball Arcanine. Yeah, there's a forfeit. Uh, you know, relatively fast game. But remember, I made a lot of really good plays. I analyzed the situation. I brought the correct Pokemon. I baited out the Coco and I said in the team preview that the Coco was like the linchpin that like if I if I gimp the Coco in some way, his whole team falls apart because it can't just it just can't be a Drifle anymore. I'm too fast. I have too many moves that can cripple the opposing Pokemon. And even though he had a bunch of snarls, it didn't really matter. So that is uh, today's two games. Let me know what you guys think about this team in the comments below. I know like I said in the beginning of the video, it's an acronym for GACT, and if you don't know what GACT is, Google G-A-C-K-T, you guys will be able to listen to some of his music. It's some of my favorite stuff. I listen to it pretty much every day. So uh, do me a favor, check that stuff out. Leave a comment or a like on the video in the comments below, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.